Hey friends, it's Cherie, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all the things that I made for the BHM Pattern Designer Challenge and Live Event. I'm really excited to share these things with you, but first, if you're new to my channel, a welcome, and if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. All right, let's get into it. <music> I first want to say welcome, 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 welcome. I'm so glad you came back to my channel. I do apologize that I haven't uploaded in a couple of weeks. I have been busy with my family, but also busy sewing. And so the cool thing is, is that I have some things to actually share with you this video. In the last video, I talked about the things that I wanted to make, and now I can share with you what I actually made. So this is good. The little break that we took from each other allowed me to be very productive. So I have some things to share with you. Please forgive the fact that I'm wearing my glasses. If you can see the ring light in my glasses, please forgive that. I'm struggling with headaches today, and the only way that I can kind of get through this video with these lights shining at me as if I wear my glasses. Um, so please forgive that. Um, I'm really excited to share with you the things that I made. I want to let you know though that I didn't take a ton of pictures like selfies. Generally when I share my makes I like to give you as many pictures of the garments at different angles as I can because I know that it helps you to determine whether or not you'd like to sew a pattern based off of how it might look on my body type. But I had so much fun at the event and the last thing I was thinking about is taking garment selfies. <laughs> and so um, the pictures that I did take often have people in them, all right? So a lot of the pictures that I have, I have a friend in the picture with me. So for the ones that I can share, I'll share. For the ones that I can't, I'll just show you the garment so that you can see what it looks like and we'll talk about how the fit was. So let's get into it. Uh, oh, I want to show you my shirt. So this is a sorority shirt and I love this shirt. They had a booth at the event. So I picked up this shirt as well as this awesome black and pink one. And I ordered a sweatshirt, which should hopefully come soon. It's so beautiful. Look at the reflectiveness on it. I love it. Um, I also got a pin to put on my black bomber jacket. Let's see if you can see it. And it just says so in the sorority letters. Love it, <laughs> so much fun. But I love this shirt. It's very soft and comfortable and form-fitting, so it's very flattering on the body. Um, and I was really proud to be able to wear it today. So let's talk about the garments that I made and I'll go in order based off of when I wore them. This first garment I'm going to share with you, I actually did not get a photo of and this is why. I had to leave my house to head to the airport at 4.50 in the morning, <laughs> okay? So your girl had cornrows and a beanie and no makeup on and sweatpants with this awesome sweatshirt that I made. And there was no way I was taking my picture at all. There's, there was just no way, it wasn't happening, okay? I had on a mask, one of those um, KN95 masks so that I wouldn't get sick on the plane. You know, anyway, so there's no photo of me wearing this. Hopefully I can take some pictures when the weather is better. It's been raining here. When the weather is better, I'd like to take pictures of all of these garments and share them with you, but I will hold them up and talk to you about it. So this is the Nomi pattern by Mimi G. This one was designed by Norris Ford. And so it's this pattern here. I made the long sleeve version here. And I actually made a size medium based off of the measurements on the packet, but I do kind of regret that. I love a good oversized sweatsuit, especially a hoodie, but I think this might be a tad bit too oversized. It's still cute, it's still comfortable, I will wear it to death, but I think the look that I was looking for is slightly slimmer than what I got. This is the gorgeous, gorgeous sweatshirt, and I love this fabric so much. If you love color and you live in a climate that is very, very cold, you need to buy this fabric. I purchased this from Melanated Fabrics and it was expensive, you guys. I'll double check and see what the price was and then I'll add it on the screen so that you can see how much I paid for it per yard. But it was expensive because it's really nice fabric. It's so thick and cozy and soft. Oh my gosh, it's soft on the outside, soft on the inside but it's very heavy. It's a heavy weighted sweatshirt fleece. Um, I love it, it's so good. So this is the sweatshirt and if you look close, you can see the enormous wide pocket on the front of the sweatshirt. And it has this really unique cool hood. 
It doesn't have drawstrings. It just kind of has like a little hole here, a cocoon hole. I don't know what it's called, but it looks really cool on. I love it. It is just so cozy and so warm and nice and soft and roomy. Perfect for flying, okay? This was so comfortable to fly in. I will say though, a couple of the times when I was traveling, I felt super, super hot. Like maybe the ventilation system wasn't super great on the airplane. So I did have to take it off once or twice um, just to cool off, but then I got cold and had to put it right back on. But if you like to travel cozy, you cannot go wrong with this fabric. It is so nice. The sweatshirt itself is a really cool design and because it's oversized, it looks really dope. I just like it a lot. And I actually wore it with some oversized Adidas sweatpants that are gray. And I thought that they just look really great together. I also paired it with my multicolored high top Adidas tennis shoes. All very, very cute. And the tennis shoes picks up all of these colors. I will be inserting a picture of me wearing those tennis shoes with another garment in a minute and you'll be able to see how the colors kind of are the similar um, but it complemented each other so very nicely this pattern itself was very easy to sew up if you want a unique cool sweatshirt that is easy to put together i highly recommend this i did line the hood and for the lining of my hood i used a black double brush poly that i had in my stash only because this sweatshirt fleece is extremely thick and I knew that it would be a very heavy hood if I used the same fabric for the lining of the hood. So I definitely recommend if you're using a heavier sweatshirt fleece uh, that you use a very lightweight fabric to line your hood. But it is such a gorgeous sweatshirt. I love it. It's so vibrant and colorful and cool. And actually my son was a little jealous. So no me patterns, okay? If you can come out with a child size version of this sweat shirt my kids will be so thrilled okay they would be over the moon excited about that so that i can make them one that matches mine so i really love this pattern again it is very oversized so my next version i will size down to a size small it is a man's sewing pattern so that is the sizing is probably totally appropriate for a man but I'm a bit petite in the shoulders and I think that a size small will be perfect. So I will be doing that. And I have just enough of this fabric left over to where I can make shorts to go with it. I won't be using the shorts from the pattern because to me they kind of look like oversized underwear. So I don't want that look. But the Sew Your View challenge on Instagram, the pattern that they're doing or that they did for the month of February has shorts. I'd love to make those sweat shorts. Um, to pair with this. So I'll be having a little matchy matchy set and I'm excited about it. It's very cute. The next pattern that I sewed up is the Nomi Kitchy Bee Style pattern ME2007. I'm so excited that I finally made this dress. Now I had originally planned to make it out of that very heavy sweatshirt fleece that I just showed you a minute ago. That would not have worked friends. If you're going to be making this dress out of a sweatshirt fleece, I highly recommend a medium to lightweight sweatshirt material because part of the reason is because the center of this dress has a really cool ribbing feature here and if you have a super heavy sweatshirt fleece on the bottom half it's going to weigh down and pull your dress down um, and you don't want that not to mention you might just get really really hot so i went ahead and used something that was already in my stash and this is an organic bamboo cotton blend sweatshirt fleece I love this fabric so much, you guys. It is such great quality. I wanted to link it for you. However, I realized I purchased it from um, fabric.com, which is no more. So I couldn't find the fabric when I Googled, Googled for it. So unfortunately, I can't share the actual fabric link with you. But I used this, it was already in my stash, and I also used ribbing that was in my stash as well. This is sweatshirt weight ribbing, okay? I wish I had had coat weight ribbing because I think that that would have cinched in the center section of this dress even more. However, this does give a lovely cinch in the waist. Um, I do have some things that I want to point out about this pattern that I'd like to change when I make my next version. But first, I do want to bring this in close so that you can see the awesome details that I added. I decided to use a decorative stitch, and these are little hearts. I use it around the neckband as well as around this area here. I just think it sets mine apart and looks a little bit different. Such a cute little detail. I have 
have been sewing on this machine for a while and not tried any of the decorative stitches so I was excited to give it a try on this dress and it turned out really lovely and yes I practiced on you know scrap fabric first before I put it on my final garment okay um, this fabric was not quite 60 inches wide so because of that I did have to make a shorter or a a smaller sleeve than what I was supposed to make, which actually worked out okay. So I made a size 16, which was too big, and I did have to size down, and I probably could size down a little bit more, but with the arm length, I had to do a size 10 in order to make it fit on my fabric. So it isn't a big deal, but I do have long arms, so when I raise my arms up high, then it kind of scoots down a bit, kind of like how my sweater does. Most things do that on me because I have long arms, so it wasn't a big deal. This is an oversized sleeve. It's supposed to be oversized, so it does lend itself well for having to have made an, a smaller slice sleeve. It actually still is roomy and still looks really nice. Um, now let's talk about the alterations that I made to the pattern in order to make it fit me. Making a size 16 definitely accommodated my bust really nicely. I think it actually looked good overall on the top half of the dress, but when it came to the waist, I had to take quite a bit out and it's partly because this is stretchy, clingy fabric and it was being weighed down by the skirt portion of the dress. So it definitely needed to be taken in quite a bit and I'll show you how I took it in. So, I actually ended up having to scoop out this shape of fabric on the sides because initially it was like this, right? And I had to scoop out this amount of fabric on each side in order to give it that nice little indent and curve on either side of the waist of this dress. As you can see, if it's in here, it's nice and straight. This is a lot of fabric, you guys. So even going down a couple of sizes in the dress, I still would have to make this type of an adjustment because of how my ribbing is. It's just not that sturdy, hard, stiff ribbing. And I just didn't need all this extra fabric. It would have been so straight like a pencil instead of having like the hourglass shape. So that's what I did. I mean, you can, Feel free to follow my lead and also trim in the center section of this dress or you can leave it as is. But for me, this is how I was able to create the illusion of hips. So this was essential and definitely something I'll have to do again in the future when I make another one. And I saved that piece for that very reason. And the, re the way that I actually scooped this out and made this shape is by using one of those curved rulers that you use when you're um, drafting patterns. So that's how I created this little piece to scoop out on the sides of my dress. Now the hips were very wide for me, so I don't have hips anymore. I had a tiny, tiny bit amount of hips a few months ago and I was finally starting to feel like, hey girl, look at you. And then all of a sudden my weight dropped. So I lost what little bit of hips I had and all my butt. And because of that, I could probably even size down to a 12. I don't know if that's on the same packet, let's see. This particular one is, yeah. So I could probably size down to a size 12 in the hips and in the bottom half of the skirt in order to accommodate my weight loss. But the upside of this dress, I would probably still make a size 16. Um, another thing that I would change in the next version is I would raise these pockets all the way up to here, maybe right underneath this uh, elastic waistband. And to be honest, I would shorten this guy too, maybe by an inch. I would shorten it for by maybe an inch because I have a short torso, I don't have a long torso. And then I would raise these pockets up by two inches because I find that the pockets just are really low. And when I have my hands in my pockets, I like it to be right here, but I found that it was down here. And that just felt awkward for me. Um, if you have a longer body, it might not, it might fit you perfectly. But for me, being short-waisted and only 5'4", I just think that the placement wasn't right for my body. So I will be raising the pockets by two inches and reducing this center waist section that is made out of ribbing by one inch to bring it up. And I think that that'll really help me in getting a better fit. I'm inserting pictures now, 
both of the pictures that I took in this dress that actually came out have a friend in there. So this picture is of me and Crystal of Crystal Sews and Stuff. And friends, if you're not following her on YouTube and Instagram, you really should. She's very talented, she's funny, and she's so nice, you guys. Like, she was nice in person and that like was so exciting for me because you know I've been watching her videos for a long time and she always seemed like a bubbly fun person and I imagined that she was nice but to actually meet her and then she is the person that she represents herself as on YouTube that was pretty cool for me so anyways check out her channel you'll enjoy her content I'm sure of it I forgot that I actually have this awesome picture of me and my sewing bestie, Creativity by T, Talisha in the house. Anyways, we look so cute twinning. <laughs> anyway, so I'm wearing this dress in those photos and I've paired them with my high top sneakers, the Adidas that I mentioned that I wore with my sweatshirt. So that was the next thing that I made. And I love this. If I didn't make that clear, I love this dress so much. I just knew know that I need to do some fit adjustments for the next time. The thing that I wore for the actual event was my Nina jumpsuit, and this is the pattern that was created by Tabitha Sewer. I love this jumpsuit, and I got a lot of compliments, you guys, but there were things about it that drove me a little bit crazy, <laughs> and it's nothing that is the pattern's fault at all. It was purely my fabric choice. I love red, okay, and I have told myself that this year I'm going to be show sewing a lot more red garments because since I love it so much, I feel like I should wear it more often. I always wear red lipstick, but I don't always wear red clothes. So I chose to make this jumpsuit out of a red bull denim that I purchased from, um, oh gosh, what is that store called? I can't remember, but I'll put the name of it and a link to it in the information section of this video. But I purchased this bull denim and it is gorgeous in the fact that it's very vibrantly colored and it washes really nicely. It's very sturdy. Um, it is just good in that way, right? The problem I have with it is that like linen, it wrinkles like crazy, which I did not expect. I thought it would behave more like other denims that I've sewn in the past. But I'm gonna stand up so you can see. There are some like hard wrinkles um, in here. Maybe you can't see it on camera, I don't know. Or maybe you can, but they're like straight lines in the fabric. Now I pressed these things so many times. I used Best Press, I used Steam. When I would travel, I take my steamer, I steamed this and everything, and I could not get these hard wrinkles out. So when I got home from my trip, I washed it and right away took it out the dryer and ironed it and still these hard wrinkles in this denim. And so, I mean, it wasn't a big deal. I still looked relatively nice. I still got compliments on it, but I was self-conscious about it because I don't typically like to leave my house wrinkled. And here it is, I'm at an event where we're all showing off army made garments and I'm wrinkled, right? So that was not ideal. Um, if you have any tricks or tips for removing wrinkles from hard denim, please let me know in the um, comment section below because this is a very cute jumpsuit and I wanna feel confident and cute wearing it and not like, dang, are people looking at me because I'm wrinkled or because it's cute? <laughs> Anyway, um, so I really enjoyed this pattern. It was pretty easy to put together. There was no hiccups with this guy at all. I will say that there is a bit of an issue that I had with attaching the, the straps at the top, and I'll come in close so that you can see what that looks like. Um, but the issue that I had is probably something that would not be an issue for someone if you made this out of a lighter weight fabric, like a cotton or a linen or something of that nature. My pen is trying to come off, you guys. Let me see if I can fix it. There we go. So I'm gonna come in close so that you can see. You fold over the fabric several times over the straps and then you sew it in place, right? On this side, it looks a little neater, but on this side, it's not as neat. And I think it was partly just because my fabric was just too thick. It's not gonna cause any problems with the construction of the overalls. You can't tell from the front of the overalls that it was that it's funny or wonky looking on the inside. So it's really not a big deal, but because the fabric is so thick, and again, this is bull denim, which is typically more um, heavier in weight and thick uh, than other denims. So it just, it was tough to sew through with my sewing machine. So that's just something to note. 
I really love that I used these Joanne buttons because they look like diamonds and they're so very cute. They twinkle, so cute. Um, and I have a zip in the back and I put these beautiful little brooches on the front because I like to bling, okay? And I just thought they were really pretty and special. So this was the jumpsuit. I really enjoyed wearing it and I do have a couple pictures of me by myself in this jumpsuit. They're not the best pictures because they're cell phone pictures and my cell phone doesn't take good pictures. Um, but I do have a couple of me in this jumpsuit and then I have a couple of me in this jumpsuit with friends as well. And I'll insert that picture as well so that you can see what it looks like and you might see some familiar faces. <laughs> so anyways, this was the next thing that I made. I do love these. I will be wearing them. I just need to figure out the wrinkle situation. Please help me. Okay, so the next pattern that I made was actually to go along with my Nina jumpsuit. Now this pattern, I could not find a black pattern designer pattern in my stash or online that would suit the desired look that I was going for. So I combined two patterns that I had. So I used Simplicity 8602 bodice, okay? And the reason why I chose this bodice is because it has cup sizes. And I love a pattern that has cup sizes, okay? And one of the things that I really like about this pattern is that the pattern sheets, you get one for each cup size. So you can use this pattern over and over again. If your weight fluctuates or whatever, and you have to go a different cup size, then you can cut out the next cup size or whatever. So you get a lot of value with this pattern. Um, and I paired this pattern with the sleeves of the uh, Butte Du Jour Nomi pattern, uh, ME 2016. So I combined those sleeves with this blouse and actually they fit together really, really nicely. The bodice on this guy is very basic. However, <laughs> I had some issues. Based off of my measurements, I made a D cup and a D cup was too small. That was the first problem. So it was too small, which means there was some pulling, okay? And it wasn't super, super flattering by itself. Now with the jumpsuit, and I'll insert a picture, a close up so that you can see what it looks like with the jumpsuit. Um, with the jumpsuit, it was okay. But I also didn't like the fabric that I chose. This is a peach skin that was left over in my fabric stash. As much as possible, most of these garments were sewn with things that I already owned because I didn't want to buy additional fabric. I wanted to use some fabric already in my stash. So this was left over from my patina blouse that I made by Friday Pattern Company. I didn't like it when I made that top either. And I forgot that I didn't like the way it behaved because I still wear that blouse. And I also forgot that this fabric doesn't like to be ironed. And it also doesn't like to be steamed. So I don't know how to win with this guy. So anyway, um, the fabric wasn't great, which meant that the facing band wasn't great on the inside and you could see through see through the fabric and see the that. And I just didn't like the way it looked. So in order to try to save this blouse, I added lace. Now I'm gonna be honest, this shirt has not been washed since I wore it on the trip. It is dirty and I need to wash it immediately. Um, but anyway, I added lace to try to cover up that facing and also give it a little cute, different look. And so I think that that was good. I think I achieved that pretty well. These puff sleeves are gorgeous. I do like the puff sleeves a lot. The only problem that I have is that because it's peach skin, it doesn't stay poofed. I wanted it to be like this, right? Like if I had used a shirting cotton, it would have been like this. But because it's peach skin, it does this. I, it wasn't the vision. So the way that I tried to address this is that I made the elastic in the arm cuff smaller in order to make it tighter so I could push the sleeve up a bit to make it more puffy. But because of the type of fabric that it is, it just was never gonna be the puffy sleeve that I wanted it to be. So I really wasn't pleased with that at all. I chose to do a little snap in the back instead of doing the little loop and button. That was just my preference. It looks nice, not a big deal. You could do either if you want. Um, another thing that I'm not 100% thrilled about is that it's a crop top and it goes at the top of your waistband. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so when you lift your arms, you could very easily show tummy. 
<laughs> so this is never going to be a blouse that I can wear with regular jeans. I would have to wear these with rib cut jeans or extremely high waisted jeans, which lately I'm trying to step away from. I have some on now, but I'm trying to step away from these st this style of jean. Um, so I don't see that this will get much wear in my wardrobe, unfortunately. And I didn't feel comfortable or confident wearing it. And one of the reasons why is because the front of my overalls, the bib, kept pushing the fabric up and the shirt was bunched like this a lot in the day and I kept fi finding myself trying to pull my blouse down underneath my overalls. I don't like that. I don't like to fuss with my clothes. Honestly, I wish I had just worn a bodysuit underneath that jumpsuit and it would have been perfectly fine. And I actually packed the bodysuit, but then I was like, no, 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 no. You must wear everything you made. Ugh. Why do I do this to myself, you guys? I could have been comfortable, confident, and cute. <laughs> Instead, I had to wear this blouse and I was uncomfortable the whole time. So if you were there and you met me and you didn't know I was uncomfortable wearing it, friends, it was driving me crazy, okay? Um, anyway, so this was the blouse and will I make it again? Maybe, I might make this again in a larger cup size um, with the sleeves that goes with it and I'm just gonna be over the puff sleeve <laughs> for this style of shirt. This is my second fail in trying to make a puff sleeve shirt to go with those overalls. So I think I'm just gonna throw in the towel on this guy for a while. Um, but yeah, I'll make this in a bigger size and I'll use the sleeves in the packet. But anyway, if you did wanna give it a try in a cotton fabric, these do work nicely together. So that's what I wore with the overalls. The last thing that I made is actually my favorite thing. And it's funny because it was the easiest project of all the things that I made. And this is the thing that got me the most compliments on my trip, which is hilarious because I was nervous to travel with it thinking that maybe it gave too much of the pajama vibes, okay? This is the Style So Me Lisa Loungewear jumpsuit. And so let me stand up. And I did take a picture of this wearing it. Now in the picture, I don't have makeup on, my hair is braided and I'm wearing the hood. <laughs> but at least you'll be able to see how it fits on my body. It's very flattering, very comfortable, very cute. And as you can see, there are African American people all over the jumpsuit. So it's covered in beautiful black people all over this jumpsuit. And at the airport, people of all ethnicities had stopped me and, and were like, oh my God, that's so cute. Where did you get that? Oh my gosh. And I was like, really? Like, because in my mind, I was like, oh, people are probably looking at me because it looks like I'm traveling in my pajamas. But really they wanted to know where I got it because they hadn't seen anything like it. And so I really enjoyed wearing this and it's going to be something that I wear often. And yes, I'll probably sleep in it and wear it, okay? <laughs> wear it out and about. So this is really great. It has a really nice deep hood, which is so fabulous. This fabric is a double brush poly and it's from Joann's and it was a part of their Black History Month fabric that they released last year. It's soft, it's stretchy, it's comfortable. Um, it's stable enough to keep the shape, which I love. And because I love this pattern so much, I think I'm gonna make it again, but in a lighter weight cotton, and I'll just wear it all year long, you know? It's just such a great pattern, so quick and easy to put together. And I'll be honest, I'm not totally in love with the instructions of a lot of the Style Sew Me patterns, um, but for this guy, it really didn't need many instructions, and it came together super easy. This is the second jumpsuit that I've made of Style Sew Me that I enjoyed. So if you've been on the fence about trying this or you have the pack and you've only tried one or two of the other versions in that pack, let me show it to you. It has three different views. One is a sweatsuit, one is an off the shoulder top with a wide leg pant, and then there's the jumpsuit. If you have tried one of the three views and didn't find that you liked the pattern, I recommend checking out the jumpsuit version because surprisingly, it was a hit. Not just was I comfortable and confident, but I got lots of compliments and people were really curious about where I bought it. So I highly recommend this one. And again, this was my favorite. I would say my second favorite would be the sweatshirt. Third favorite would be the um, Kichi B style sweatshirt dress. And then lastly, my Nina jumpsuit, which I do love the Nina jumpsuit. I just wish I had picked a fabric that didn't wrinkle like that. <laughs> 
So all, those are all the things that I made for the BHM Pattern Designer Challenge. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the things that I made and hearing about what it was like to make them. I hope that you plan on trying some of these patterns. And if you do, I'd love to hear about your experience sewing them. And if you have any sewing tips or recommendations, for any of these patterns, please do put them in the comment section below. And I also want to encourage you to check out the BHM Pattern Designer Challenge link on Instagram, okay? T type in the hashtag so that you can see all the garments that other people made and submitted for the challenge. Thank you so much, Natita of So Natural Dane, for putting together this amazing challenge and also hosting the most fun event. I had such a great time. I met so many wonderful people and I just got an opportunity to be with some sewing sisters and talk sewing all weekend with people that actually cared about what I was talking about. So thank you for that opportunity and I can't wait until your next event. If you enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. Talk to you soon. Bye.